What up you nerds, Fallout here, and even though it's gonna be a pain in the neck, today we are going over the god roll for literally one of my favorite PvP weapons in all of D2, the bottom dollar. This gun is without question top shelf. 120 RPM hand cannons are still very much a top dog primary in PvP, and until we get another very large weapon, sandbox, shakeup, it's going to remain that way for a while. Now there are other good options out there, mainly the Adept Igneous Hammer and its ability to take all those beautiful Adept weapon mods, but Trials is in a laughably bad state right now and a lot of people would rather pluck out their own beehole hairs one at a time than even step one foot into Trials. If that's even a little bit you, yeah, you already know, the bottom dollar is a hot energy primary and I recommend it incredibly highly on my list of weapons that you should probably have a cracked roll of. So why is it a pain in the neck to review one of my favorite PvP weapons? Really quickly, I'll show you. Take a peek of all the available perks you can get on this bad boy. Column 3 and Column 4 alone offer up 24 freaking perks, but that's okay because by now I'm a goddamn viking at knowing what all these things do and which ones you want, yada yada yada. We're gonna go through everything on the table and figure out what you're looking for in a PvP god roll. But before we talk about the bottom dollar, why don't we talk about your bottom barrel with the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Manscaped. Oh, I told you the transitions were gonna get worse. Boys, here we are in 2021. Spring is right around the corner. It's the season of new beginnings, fresh fragrance, and romance. But you can't attract the one with the high KD ratio alone. You gotta know how to clean up good, not only downstairs with the perfect package 3.0 kit, but upstairs too. Don't let this happen to you. And upgrade your clean routine with the Manscaped Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer, the only nose hair trimmer on the market with a cordless rechargeable lithium ion battery. I mean, you could always try tweezing if you're into pain or dirty old toenail scissors, always a great choice. Or you could do the smart and easy thing with the new Weed Whacker. Gets the job done every time, no problem. Easy to charge, easy to store, and water resistant. Look and feel your best. Head on over to manscaped.com and get both 20% off your order and free shipping when you use promo code PLAYS20 at checkout. Again, that is promo code PLAYS20 at manscaped.com and thank you again to Manscaped for keeping us fresh and keeping our barrels clean. All right, back to the content. Let's do what we always do and start over on the left in column one barrel options. We've got nine to choose from and all the usual hand cannon options are there. Quick reminder that with hand cannons, I'm almost always going to go with either range or stability, but you do whatever you want. Handling is literally never bad to have and recoil direction on the bottom dollar is golden no matter which way you go. Let me elaborate on that. The default recoil direction of the bottom dollar is 85, which should be fairly vertical because remember from my very old video on counterbalance that you should watch, recoil direction ending in a 5 or at 100 is usually what we want. Extended barrel or chambered compensator can each take your recoil direction up to 95, which is great. And if you really care, arrowhead brake can take it up to an even 100. Still, I would probably avoid arrowhead because 85 or 95 recoil direction IMO is probably gonna be near perfect. And at that point, I would rather focus on buffing range or stability. Small bore, always a great 120 RPM hand cannon pick because it gives you a buff to both. Polygonal rifling is great if you're having difficulty with the default stability, and hammer forged rifling is great if you're A-OK -okay with the default weapon kick and you want big hard range. Full bore is definitely a risky move. I know people love the old D1 mindset of range is God on hand cannons, but if you actively hurt your stability, especially on a 120 RPM, believe me, you're gonna feel it. It's definitely something you can make work though, but a hard recommendation that if you're gonna go with full bore, you pair it together ideally with something like steady rounds over in column two, they pair well together. Overall for barrel pick for me, it's gonna be either small bore, polygonal, hammer forged, or full bore based on what you value most, range or stability. Moving on to column two, more range and more stability on the table, unless you really care about magazine size or reload speed, which personally, I do not. I can always put a hand cannon reloader armor mod on if I wanna crank that up or get a perk in column three, not as easy to do if you want range or stability. If you're interested in having a bigger mag, appended, tactical, or extended are all available. Again, at that point, I say just go with the backup mag weapon mod. That'll take your mag up to 12. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Tactical mag and flared magwell are both worth a look because they bump your stability up a teensy bit and anything you can do to help control your primary weapon kick 
is high tier in my book. When ricochet rounds ain't on the table, usually the two perks I'm eyeballing the most are accurized rounds and steady rounds. Accurized is always top tier for hand cannons, a hard buff to range with no drawbacks. You'd be crazy to not want it. Steady rounds gives a big stability buff, but at the cost of a little range. Normally, I'd say no, but again, if you have full bore in column one and you pair that with steady rounds, you're walking away with 10 to your range and 5 to your stability overall. That ain't bad at all if that's the hand you're dealt. Now, if you had something like small bore and accurized rounds together, that might be a better deal overall. 15 range and 7 stability with no handling penalty that you get with full bore and steady. But alas, we cannot control what RNG puts into our hands. I'ma say it's kinda situational, but accurized for me is the most desired perk in column 2. And we are moving on. Column 3, we get into the good stuff, and again, Damn, there is a lot to pick from. I'll try to keep it short. Weeding out what we don't want right away, or at least what I don't value as much. Hip fire grip. Don't call us, we'll call you, bro. Yeah, hip firing can occasionally be helpful, but there are much better options here. Oh, and uh, fourth time's the charm. Not ideal on a PvP hand cannon when you only need three bullets to kill. I'm gonna pass. Okay, now we're gonna get into the perks which are situationally good, beginning with Pulse monitor, auto reload your gun and bump up handling when you get wounded. Not terrible, but I don't like that you can only take advantage of it when you're hurt. Subsistence kills auto reload the mag from reserves. Not bad at all, probably not my main pick here in column three, but it does pair together beautifully with Rampage in column four, which, shocker, is a god tier perk. Other perks in column three rank from great to god tier. Outlaw, rapid hit, and feeding frenzy all go under the same umbrella. Better reloading. Normally, not very sexy, but I know all of you can see multi-kill clip silently glaring over from column four, meaning lightning quick reload perks are worth a look in column three. Outlaw gives better reload on a crit kill. Feeding frenzy doesn't require a crit and can stack, but rapid hit is my favorite out of the three. You pump up that reload and stability for getting headshots, not kills. While I wouldn't hate a bottom dollar with feeding frenzy, I'd probably take rapid hit over it if I could. Surplus and slide shot almost fall under the same umbrella. They can help your reload, but you have more control over when the buff happens. It doesn't rely on an enemy being damaged or killed. Slide shot, you know the drill. Slide Sliding partially reloads your weapon and gives a buff to both range and stability. Calm down, new players. The veterans will tell you. Slide shot is great for special weapons like shotguns and fusion rifles, but the buff to range and stability will barely help you with a hand cannon. Reason being is that the buff only lasts for 1.25 seconds. Yeah, 1.25 barely any time at all. You never want to rely on a weapon perk whose benefit will only last twice as long as I do in bed, good rule of thumb. That'll maybe help you for one hand cannon shot, and that's if you're sliding into an engagement. Surplus IMO is the better pick. Better handling, reload, and stability for each fully charged ability. The buffs given by Surplus are no joke. While I'm yammering on, go ahead and take a look at how much quicker your reload goes up at Surplus level 1, level 2, and level three. Now you take that same level of improvement and add it to both handling and stability. I like surplus a lot. Some people don't because the constantly fluctuating stability means you can't develop a permanent muscle memory for the weapon kick. If you don't really care about that though, I recommend the perk highly. Quick draw is literally always good for any weapon. I would rather have a different column three perk, but don't be bummed if you get quick draw. Finally, we have rangefinder and killing wind. Rangefinder helps that damage drop off point, which makes 120 RPM really obnoxious from downtown. Killing Wind is always a favorite of mine. Six second duration and you get better range, better handling, and better movement. Check out this clip of how quickly you can strafe normally while ADSing a hand cannon. And now check out the strafe speed when Killing Wind is activated. I'll tell you, that ain't nothing, bro. Quicker movement means the enemy may have a harder time counter shooting you, and the better range and handling is icing on the cake. Out of every perk in column three, I probably rank Killing Wind, Surplus, and rapid hit as my top three, but as we've gone over, the other options are plenty viable. Moving on to column four, a bunch of great perks here. I'm a weed out what I probably don't want right away. Dragonfly, mm, nah, that'll probably be fun if you have multiple enemies shoulder to shoulder 24 seven, then yeah, it'll help. Otherwise, waste of a perk on the dollar. High impact reserves. Also no, this is not a fusion rifle. You want extra damage? Much better options here for that. 
Thresh. As I've gone over in another video, Thresh does not work in PvP. Believe me on that. I've looked at the data frame by excruciating frame. Doesn't work. You don't want it on a PvP gun. Unrelenting. Perk has been bugged in the past, but let's go on the assumption that it's fixed forever and won't ever break anymore. Not a bad option. Getting more health in an engagement can be huge, but if you're asking me, I would probably rather take another perk in column four. Remember, you need to kill two enemies to get Unrelenting to activate, and two kills or even one can get you a lot more with a different perk here in column four. Eye of the Storm, definitely a handy perk. When you get slapped around hard enough to be at low shields or critical health, eye kicks in and pumps up your handling and your weapon accuracy. Weapon accuracy buffs are huge in D2, but the sucky part does remain. You can't take advantage of the buff unless you are hurt. And when you're hurt, you are naturally easier to get gunned down while trying to take advantage of said perk. Risk versus reward for sure, up to you. Moving on, Demolitionist, as always, if you're running a grenade heavy build in PvP, <clears throat> may God have mercy on your soul, and also Demo is probably the perk that you're looking for. Really good perk, I probably want different on my bottom dollar though. Why don't we talk really quickly about Disruption Break. By breaking an enemy's shield with a weapon equipped with Disruption Break, you make them more vulnerable to incoming kinetic damage about 50% more. Whole thing lasts for about four seconds. A lot of people really like this perk, but IMO, it is very situational. Remember that by breaking a guardian shields in PVP, you have to do about 110 damage, give or take. Now, if you've already done that much damage and their shields are popped, they're probably gonna die to whatever hits them next anyway. That being said, it can be helpful if you miss the kill shot and your buddy cleans up the kill with a kinetic primary. But again, is it worth the god roll pick on our bottom dollar. If you're asking me, no. Now we are getting into what I feel are the high ranked perks. Wellspring, get a kill and recharge your ability energy. If you haven't noticed, abilities in D2 are very strong right now. Yeah, some of them are getting nerfed in an upcoming patch, but the way I see it, they're still gonna be top notch. Wellspring helps feed into that big time and is definitely worth a look. Opening shot and explosive payload. Big yeah to both. Explosive payload can help you maintain decent damage over longer range. When you hit an enemy with explosive payload, the normal damage number gets split into two. The damage number that is tied to the teeny little explosion will never diminish due to long range, no matter how far away you get from your target. Meaning that at the very least, you're doing a decent amount of damage to your enemy, even if you're very far away. It can also be fairly disorienting to get shot by, which is a teeny bonus on top. Opening shot, better range and accuracy on the opening shot of your attack. Remember that opening shot has a very generous reactivation time. The perk won't only activate on the first bullet in your mag. If you're not actively firing the weapon, opening shot will recharge in about three-ish seconds. Top shelf perk for hand cannons, and you should probably be really happy if you get it on your bottom dollar. And the final two. Surprise, surprise, Rampage and Multi-Kill Clip. If you want your hand cannon to be able to two-tap people, you want one of these perks, and honestly, either should be fine. With Multi-Kill Clip, you got three levels of damage that you can ramp up to. Level one giving you 17% more damage, level two giving you 33% more damage, and level three giving you 50% more damage. On level one alone, your headshot damage ramps up to 105, allowing you to two-tap literally any non-shielded neutral game guardian in PvP, no matter what. With Rampage, you also have three levels of damage, but the output is a tad smaller, 10% per level, capping out at 30% extra damage total. At Rampage level one, headshot damage goes up to 99, meaning you can two-tap any guardian under nine Resil and not many players even go that high. Multi-kill clip lasts for five full seconds once activated, and Rampage only lasts for about 3.5. Between the two, it seems like multi-kill clip is the clear winner, but Rampage has the ability to activate right away with no need for a reload. They both bring a lot to the table. Personally, I would probably rather have multi-kill clip for the longer duration alone, but my current bottom dollar has Rampage, and I love it. Both perks are god tier and will help you get two taps in PvP. For the weapon masterwork, I'm always on the hunt for range or stability. Easy answer there for me. Alrighty, why don't we review what are our bottom dollar PvP god rolls? That's right, I said rolls as in plural. Now, I'm mainly gonna cover columns three and four for the final rolls, by the way. If you want my final opinions on column one and column two, small bore, polygonal, hammer forged, or full bore, and either accurized or steady rounds. As long as you have a good balance of range and stability together, 
you're golden. Okay, first god rolls for column three and four, rapid hit and multi kill clip. While any reload perk in column three would work, rapid hit is probably my favorite. Get that quick reload and two tap away. Next up we have rampage paired with either killing wind or subsistence. Both pair very well with rampage. And again, the goal there being to tap city. Next we have literally any combination of killing wind, surplus or range finder in column three, and Wellspring, Explosive Payload, and Opening Shot in Column 4. The goal there being a strong neutral game hand cannon. Yeah, you won't get any two taps like you would with the damage dealing perks, but every perk there is a neutral game monster. Better movement, better weapon performance, better ability regeneration, it's all gravy. Very hard to go wrong if you have any of those perks, they go great with the bottom dollar. And there you go, my ideal roll combos on No Joke, one of my favorite weapons in the entire game. I know, farming for the bottom dollar is brutal, but you can always check out my guide on how to hopefully make bottom dollar farming go as quickly as possible. Believe me, if you go farming and you wind up with one and it has even half good perks, you will be thankful you put in the effort. Tell me down in the comment section what weapon you want me to do a god roll video on next. Whatever option gets the most recommendations, I will strongly consider doing. And while you're down there, click the like button because it really does help my channel out and click the big red subscribe button. That actually doesn't help at all, but it will make your elo bigger. True story. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.